On Monday, October 7, 1985, a cruise ship named Akil Laro arrived at the port of Alexandria, Egypt. The ship had embarked on its journey from the city of Genoa, Italy, carrying 748 passengers and 450 crew members. At the Alexandria port, 651 passengers disembarked from the ship and boarded buses to travel to the pyramids of Giza. After their excursion, the ship's captain decided to exit the port of Alexandria and set the cruise ship's direction towards the west of Egypt, approximately 225 kilometers away from the port of Said, with the remaining 97 passengers on board. These passengers were expected to rejoin the cruise ship after a 14-hour tour to Cairo. However, upon returning to the port of Said at precisely 10 p.m., the passengers hoped to reunite with their fellow travelers, only to find no sign of the Akil Laro at the port. It was later discovered that the Akil Laro had been hijacked. Among the 97 passengers were four hijackers who had concealed their weapons, possibly inside a fuel tank, which led to a significant amount of smell in their cabin. They immediately went to the ship's dining hall and instilled fear among the passengers, initiating a hostage situation. The identities and motives of these hijackers remained unknown to everyone on board. Before the hijackers reached the ship's radio room, an operator seated there broadcasted an SOS call, alerting the outside world that the Akil Laro had been hijacked. This SOS message was intercepted by a radio station in Sweden. The hijackers were unaware of this broadcast and seized control of the radio room, cutting off all communication systems on the ship. They informed the ship's captain that the 450 crew members should continue their duties, as usual, but avoid getting close to any hostages. Akil Laro was now sailing towards Syria instead of the port of Said. During this hijacking, three different countries' nationals were on board, U.S. passengers, an Italian ship, and the incident was taking place in Egyptian territory. Consequently, the debate arose about which country should take action. The U.S. authorities believed that since the ship was Italian, Italy should take action. However, the Italian government preferred resolving the hijacking through negotiations rather than using force, as they didn't want their name tarnished in Mediterranean countries. The U.S., on the other hand, wanted to take a tougher stance with the hijackers. On October 8, Akil Laro arrived near Syria. The captain requested permission to dock at Tartu's port, but since the Syrian authorities had already been alerted by the U.S., they did not respond. Afterward, the hijackers began separating hostages based on their nationality. It seemed they were searching for Americans and Jews among them. They ended up segregating a total of 20 passengers. One of the hijackers, who seemed to be the leader, communicated through the radio and identified themselves as part of the Palestinian Liberation Front. They demanded that Israel release their 50 comrades in exchange for the 20 hostages. The situation had now become more complex and intricate, as one of the hijackers, who initially claimed to be from Norway, turned out to be Palestinian. The case had taken a new turn with more complications arising. As the identity of the hijackers had been established, Italy directly contacted Palestinian President Yasser Arafat, who was also the chairman of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Italy inquired if there was any involvement of the PLO in this hijacking. Yasser Arafat not only disowned the hijacking, but also dispatched a negotiation team to deal with the matter. Abu Abbas, part of the negotiation team, made contact with the hijackers through Cyprus radio station and advised them to immediately head towards the port of Said and surrender peacefully along with all the passengers. The leader of the hijackers complied with Abu Abbas's request and instructed the captain to sail to the port of Said. Despite protests from the U.S., negotiations had already begun. Italy and Egypt preferred handing over the hijackers to the PLO, who would then conduct their trial for the act of piracy. On the next day, October 9, the captain reassured everyone through a public radio message 
that all passengers and crew on the ship were safe. Following this message, Italy and Egypt decided to give the hijackers safe passage. A small boat was sent to Akil Laro, and the four hijackers boarded it. Once they reached the Egyptian mainland, they disappeared. Everyone believed that the negotiations had succeeded, and the hijackers had retracted their demands. However, the hijackers who were set free had actually committed a major crime on Egyptian soil, and now all arms were directed toward Egypt. Italy informed Egypt that the hijackers had been handed over to them, but Egypt was also trying to distance itself from the situation. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak stated that, the hijackers had been put on a plane and sent to Tunisia, where they would be under the protection of the PLO representation. On October 10, at 6 p.m., the hijackers were about to depart from Akil Laro, aboard a civilian aircraft operated by El Maza Air Base. Neither Italy nor Egypt knew that, the U.S. Air Force had intercepted this plane while it was still in the air. As soon as the hijacker's plane took off, U.S. fighter jets went on alert and started pursuing it. After staying in the air for about one and a half hours, the U.S. Air Force jets surrounded the aircraft and instructed the pilot to land at Siganella Air Base in Italy. On the night of October 11, at 12.10 a.m., the aircraft landed at Siganella Air Base. The agreement between Italy and the U.S. was that Italy would prosecute the hijackers. The Italian troops took custody of the four hijackers and another important individual sent on the plane. Due to the presence of Abu Abbas on the plane, it was believed that he might have orchestrated the entire hijacking plan. However, Yasser Arafat claimed to have no knowledge of this plan and stated that, he was not informed about any such conference related to the hijacking. Due to a lack of evidence linking Abu Abbas to the hijacking, Italy released him. However, the four hijackers were put on trial and sentenced. Later, it was discovered that their motive wasn't just to hijack the ship, but to use the cruise ship to launch an attack on Israel's Ashdod port. This step was taken in response to Israel's bombing just days prior to the hijacking. If you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to Wonderful Stories, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next amazing video.